Hi everybody, these are notes number two for unit 11. Just like we did with our last notes, you'll notice that we put little symbols of pencils where we would really like you to take down some notes. So make sure that you have some extra paper with you, pencil, calculator, and let's get started. So again, please make sure at the top of your paper you write that this is unit 11, notes number two, solving quadratic equations using square roots. So notes number one, we use factoring. Note number two, we're going to explore how we can use for some of the quadratics just square rooting them. And this is where the calculator comes in handy. Now, before we do anything, I just want you to consider the following quadratic equation. Once again, notice there is no little pencil symbol, so you don't need to write this down. I just want you to concentrate on looking, listening, and just watching, okay? So let's take a look at x squared minus 4 equals 0. Well, if we were to do it using factoring, well, maybe we might notice that it does only have two terms. I don't see a GCF or a greatest common factor I could pull out. So you know what? Let me check for difference of perfect squares. Hey, look at this. X squared can be square rooted because that's just going to give me an X. The 4 can be square rooted that's going to give me a 2. So if I factored x squared minus 4, I would get x plus 2 and x minus 2. So if we were to do this problem with factoring, we first have to recognize that we did have a difference of perfect squares. Go ahead and square root and place them in the parentheses. But then remember, we also have to remember that each of these must be set equal to 0. And that was the zero product property. The idea that if you have two things being multiplied, one of them must be zero. So that means this entire chunk here, x plus 2, well, either that whole thing equals zero, or this chunk right here, the x minus 2, that must have been the one that equaled zero. For this left one, we'd have to subtract the 2 to get the x alone, and that would give us x equals negative 2. Over here, we'd have to add the 2 over to the other side, and that would have given us a positive 2. So together, that answer is negative 2 and 2. So if you had to use the factoring method, or the way, or using factoring to solve it, this is what you would have to do. But now I just want you to think about equation solving. Okay, so I wrote the problem twice because now we're going to do it a second time. But this time I just want you to think about algebra. This whole year we've been concentrating on solving equations. When we solve equations, we had said to do addition and subtraction first, then undo multiplication and division. Well, what we were really doing there is going the reverse order of the operation reverse order of the order of operations, PEMDAS. So if you think about it, I'm going to switch that around. That would give me sad map. So sometimes I like to write this above my equations just to remind me that when I'm solving an equation, I always want to make sure I undo addition or subtraction first, the A and the S, the SA. Then I would move on to any division or multiplication. And for all the things we'd already done, that was kind of all there was. However, now that we've got these quadratics, meaning we've got our variable with an exponent, well, that's what the E means. So we're going to take care of the exponent now, but the first thing we have to do is get it by itself. So if I solve this kind of like a regular equation, well, let me just go ahead and add the 4 to the other side first. That would leave me with x squared on the left and a positive 4 on the right. Now, I wouldn't be done yet, though, because my x is not alone. He still has that 2. So if I think about the rules of solving an equation, I've taken care of any addition or subtraction that needed to be done, so I'll go ahead and cross that out. Um, well, there's nothing being multiplied or divided to the x, so I'm going to cross out the dm part. But now I'm ready to tackle that E, which we know stands for exponent. So now we're ready to undo the exponent. 
So the question comes into play is, well, how do you undo a square root? Well, we talked a lot about inverse operations. If you've got plus, you've got to subtract. If you've got times, you've got to divide. Well, if you have something being squared, you square root. So we're going to go ahead and square root both sides of the equation. By square rooting, it completely eliminates that exponent of 2. So now we will just have an x. And the square root of 4, well, we worked with square roots in the very beginning of the year, and we talked about our perfect squares. Well, 4 is a perfect square. 2 times 2 is 4. So 4 is a perfect square, and its square root is 2. Now let's just pause for a second before we say we're done and compare the two problems here. If we use the factoring method, we had gotten two answers. We had gotten that two, but we also got a negative two. So what we have to remember is that if we are going to do this square root method, you have to remember that it's not just two, but it's also negative two. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll write this symbol right here. And I know that some of you guys are going to remember this from last year. What this is, is we generically call it a plus or minus symbol because it literally says that our answer is a plus two or a positive two or a minus two, a negative two. If you don't feel comfortable with this symbol, that's fine. You could also just write your answer as two comma negative two. You could separate it the way we did over here. Okay, you could put it in braces if you'd like. But basically, guys, by just throwing on that plus or minus symbol, you can go ahead and just circle that, and that satisfies your final answer. Remember also what we talked about with equations. You can always get your answers and plug that, that them back in to check. So if you're ever a little weary, like, well, wait a minute, because the negative two really work? Well, go ahead and plug that negative 2 back into the original problem. Remember, negative 2, that entire thing is being squared, and then you're taking 4 away from it. We talked a lot about this in the beginning of the year, guys. If that negative symbol is within the parentheses like that, that means you've got negative 2 times negative 2, which is then a positive 4. And if you've got 4 minus 4, yeah, that's 0. It checks out. So the most important thing you need to remember is that if you are solving an equation where you are required to square root, you're physically required to put in that square root symbol, you have to remember the plus or minus sign. Now, a quick note before we go on with the official steps and the other examples. You can only use this method. Okay, so you can only use square root to solve a quadratic that has no bx term. So just to kind of remind ourselves, when we have a quadratic in standard form, we said it looks like this. Well, the idea is that the only time we can use this method is if we only have an x squared term and some constant we cannot have the bx term. Now with that being said, there is something that you may learn in Algebra 2 called completing the square, where they may take a problem like this and create a problem where it is a square and no bx term is there. But for our purposes, no. If you see that you have just an X hanging out in the problem, you cannot use this method. You have to use factoring or the one other method, which we'll talk about in our next video. So moving on from there, here are our official steps to solving quadratic equations. Now notice for these last two pieces here, the note and our steps, we do have that pencil symbol. So please make sure that you're taking the time now to write these down on your notes. So our official steps for solving quadratic equations using square rooting, okay? And this is part one because I have a few examples that are a little different. 
First things first is to use algebra to isolate the x squared. When I say algebra, remember that just means inverse operations. Like what we did up top here, how you had to add the 4 to move it to the other side, and that got the x squared alone. So basically, you're almost treating it like a regular equation, trying to get that x alone. The only difference is that when that x is alone, he'll still have that square. So now your next step is to officially square root both sides of the equation. And when you square root a number, do not forget, put the symbol plus or minus in front of your answer. Because there are two answers, the positive version and the negative version. And then last but not least, you can go ahead and just circle that answer you have with the plus or minus, or you can write them separately, like we did up here in braces, we're just listing them, that's fine. All right, at this point, if you have not finished writing down these notes, make sure you do so. Pause the video if you need to. And moving on to our examples. Of course, the examples have the little pencil symbol because it's super important that you get down all the examples. So that way you have everything you need to as you're doing the homework and the quiz which we will do based on this material. So all of these are just to solve, and you'll notice as you look through, they all have a term that has x squared. They also have a constant somewhere, sometimes two, but in none of these do you see just an x, and that's super important. Because if it had just an x term, then we wouldn't be able to use this method. Remember what the goal was, was to kind of do reverse order of operations and make sure we got that x squared alone. Well, if you take a look at number one, well, he's already alone. Awesome. We can just go ahead and square root right away. By square rooting, we get that two completely taken off the x. We should remember that 64 is a perfect square. If not, you grab a calculator, grab your phone, check it out, square root the 64, and you'll find that our answer is eight. But again, don't forget, it's not just a positive eight, but it's also a negative eight. Because if you took a negative eight and multiplied it by negative eight, you'd get the positive 64 as well. So you've got two answers, the positive eight and the negative eight. Or again, if you just want to list them out, negative 8 and 8, that would be fine as well. Put them in a little cute braces if you'd like. Whatever works, just as so long as we know that there are two answers. Now over here for number 2, notice that the x squared is not alone. So what I'm going to do, guys, is just write over top of it that little sad map that we put on the first page. Just the idea that when we do solve an equation, even though it has a crazy x squared with it, I really am just doing regular equation solving, which involves me to reverse the order of operations. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look for any addition or subtracting to do, and that's where the nine comes into play. It's a positive nine, so I'm gonna subtract it over to the other side. That'll leave me with x squared equals 81. There's no division to do because there's no uh, coefficient on the x squared. There's no multiplication to do. So I'm ready now to take care of my x squared, which is at that e level there. To take care of the x squared, I'm going to square root. 81 is a perfect square. It is nine. And again, don't forget the plus or minus. There's two answers that work here. There is a negative nine that would work and a positive nine. Now number three, again, I don't want us to forget about our equation solving skills. So I'm just gonna write a little sad map on the side here to remind me that I wanna get my x squared alone, but I gotta make sure I do it in the proper way. So I've got my SA, which stands for the addition and subtraction, but notice that there's nothing being added or subtracted to the X squared. The only thing I do have is that six. That six is actually being multiplied. 
Remember that six is not actually part of the square. He's not being squared, just the x's. Well, if I want to get rid of a coefficient of six, then that means I'm going to have to divide by six. So that's going to give me x squared equals nine. And now that I've gone through, boom, boom, I'm ready to go ahead and square root. So we'll square root both sides. So that way I just have an x. Square root of nine is three, but don't forget plus or minus. So once again, just to reiterate, anytime that you are solving an equation and you are then square rooting in that equation, you have to remember there's two answers. There's the positive one and there's the negative one. Now number four has basically a little bit of everything in here. So again, I'm gonna write that sad mep on the side to take us through all the different steps to get that X all by itself. My first order of business is to take care of any addition or subtraction. Well, there's the subtraction right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that over to the other side. So that'll leave me with the 2X squared equals 32. So I'm now officially done with that part. Now I check to see if there's anything that I can divide or multiply. Well, remember we've got this two as the coefficient, not to be confused with the two that's the square, but this two, remember he is a coefficient. He is technically meaning that it is two times whatever X squared is. So we're gonna divide by that two and that will give us X squared equals 16. So that takes care of this second part of our equation solving. And now that we have the x squared all by himself, we're finally ready to take care of the exponent, meaning get rid of this little two. And we're gonna do that by square rooting. By square rooting something that's squared, it completely undoes that operation, leaving us with just an x. 16 is a perfect square, and again, don't forget the plus and minus. Okay, now five, six, and seven are no different than three and four, but you'll see they just offer a little bit extra of a difference. So I just wanted to make sure that we went through them just in case you see them in the future. Hint, hint. All right, so taking a look at number five, we're gonna follow the same steps that we did for number four. First things first, let's undo any addition or subtraction. So I see that I've got a minus nine, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the other side. That will leave me with the four X squared equals nine. Now I've got that coefficient of four. To undo that, I'm gonna divide both sides by four. So the first thing you might notice is, oh wait, nine is not perfectly divisible by four. Now you could take a calculator and divide it, okay? But I'm just gonna warn you guys, I'm not trying to trick you, okay? So just go ahead and leave the fraction over top of each other and I'll show you what to do next. We've got that x squared that's all by itself. Let's now go ahead and square root. Well, the thing here, guys, is when I go ahead and square root that right side, I gotta square root that entire fraction. Now, I'm not sure if we covered this in the beginning of the year or not, but basically what happens when you square root a fraction, what you're actually doing is you're actually square rooting the top and square rooting the bottom. And then whatever you get just goes right back into a fraction. So the square root of nine is three, the square root of four is two. Don't forget the plus or minus, and that's your final answer. A positive and negative three over two. Now I'm not sure if you remember or not, but this actually was a problem that was on our first section of notes. It only had two terms, it didn't have any GCF, so we recognized that it was a difference of perfect squares. When we went ahead and factored it, we ended up getting 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. They both solved down to give you a positive 3 halves and a negative 3 halves. So again, 
Showing this way here is just another option for you depending on what the actual quadratic looked like. So any quadratic that does have the x squared term and the constant that is factorable, you are free to use factoring. This is just an alternative method for that. Number six though, let's take a look at that guy. This one though, a little different, okay? Following what we've been doing, okay, let's get rid of that 20. So we're gonna go ahead and subtract that over to the other side. Notice that now, once we do that, we don't have a perfect square anymore, okay? So first things first is 20 wasn't a perfect square anyway, so thinking about trying to do like any factoring like you could have done with this, not really gonna be good. But now also notice that once I get my x squared alone, I don't get a perfect square, okay? That does not mean there's a problem, guys. I did give you at least one problem where there is not a perfect square, because guess what, guys? Sometimes you're not gonna get pretty answers, okay? In particular with some of the stuff we're gonna do in the next notes. So that doesn't change, though, the algebra that we need to do. The x squared is alone, so I go ahead and I square root both sides. It just comes down to now, I really do have to use a calculator, okay? There's no way that I can just go ahead and square root a number by hand, or well, there could be, but they'd be super old because nobody does it anymore. Instead, go ahead and grab your calculator, okay? Depending on the calculator you're using, you put in the square root symbol first and then type five. If you're using your cell phone, you might be typing five and then the square root sign. When you go ahead and hit enter, it's super, super ugly. My rule of thumb is I round like I would for money. Money has two decimal places, so that's how I'll round my answers if they don't specify otherwise. So x equals, don't forget the plus or minus, it is 2.2. Now the next number is a 3, but the guy after that is a 6. Well, remember, five or above, give it a shove. So that means that's going to end up being a 0.24. And that's okay. All right. I know I'm usually not blue with decimals that are ugly and have to be rounded, but guys, square root of five, remember from unit one, is an irrational number. There's no way to make that into a fraction. So we just go ahead and we just round it. Okay? And last but not least on this page, guys, okay, notice you also have kind of situation. I'm looking at that seven and I'm like, right off the bat, I know that's not a perfect square. Things might be getting ugly. But again, let's just go through and do what we're doing with the others. Let's get that x squared alone. So that's a positive seven. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract it from both sides. That'll give me x squared equals negative seven. 7 is not a perfect square, like I said. So when I'm ready to go ahead and square root, I go ahead and use my calculator. Now, it's super important that you're putting in what you're square rooting, which is that negative 7. When you actually put in a negative 7 to be square rooted, I get an error. Even your cell phone will say error. It might not explain why, but it will say error. A regular calculator, guys, a handheld calculator will tell you in some way, shape, or form, non-real answer. The simple fact is, guys, is that in Algebra 1, and we talked about this in the beginning of the year, guys, you cannot square root negative numbers. Now, in Algebra 2, they're going to talk about these things called imaginary numbers. An imaginary number is the square root of negative 1. So it kind of gives you an option to get an answer out of this. But in Algebra 1, we don't do that. All we do is say, wait a minute. This can't be negative! Exclamation point. So then my official answer here will be no real solution. You can abbreviate it as NRS if you'd like. Now, just so we're clear, you do have to write no real solution. You cannot write no solution as we would have with some of our equations in our equation chapters. 
Because technically, guys, there is an answer here. It's just an imaginary one. It's not real. So therefore, what we're going to need to write is no real solution. So anytime you get your x squared alone, and somehow this guy ended up being negative, and you check over your work, you make sure you didn't make any mistakes, the answer will be no real solution. Make sure you get that down in your notes, because there will be one like that on the homework, and of course one like that in the future when we take our quiz. And lastly, we just got two more problems, but they're gonna look a little different, so I've kind of created another bunch of steps for you to write down. If you kind of skim down to the bottom here, guys, here, I'll just show you real quick. Notice that instead of the x just being all by itself and squared, now the x is part of a complete quantity that's being squared. So we're gonna just adjust our steps a little bit. Okay, so please make sure you write these down as I go through them. So this is our part two. So again, we're still using algebra to kind of get that squared thing alone, except now it just so happens to be a quantity that is squared. Once you get the quantity that's being squared to be all by itself on one side and a constant on the other, now we're going to square root both sides of the equation. Again, just like we did before, when you square root a number, make sure you put that plus or minus in front of the answer. The problem though with these though is that we're not done yet, okay? We're not done because we still have that one, for example, up here, that would be still left with the x. So from there, we actually have to split and create two different equations. One will be equal to the positive of the plus or minus number, and one will be equal to the negative, the minus of the plus or minus number. And then you'll go ahead and solve and get your two answers. So kind of what's happening with here, guys, is now you have that extra added part of the reverse order of operations, where now we've got parentheses. So if you think about it, I gotta undo that addition and subtraction. I gotta undo the division and multiplication. I have to undo the exponent so I can finally break into the P parentheses. So once again, make sure you get these steps down. If you have not, then please make sure you pause the video before then continuing on to the bottom. So just like we did with the others, guys, actually up top here, I'm going to write that whole sad mep, which is just PEMDAS backwards. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That wasn't clear before. Notice with number eight, yes, I have a minus one, but that is inside parentheses. So I can't go ahead and just add that out. It's being protected. So it's in parentheses protected. You can't get in there just yet. So instead, for something like number eight, the first thing you're gonna have to do is actually square root because there's nothing in front or nothing being added or subtracted to take care of first. We can actually jump straight to that E exponent. Just like the other problems, that square root symbol completely knocks out that exponent of two and just drops the X minus one out completely nothing around him. Over here, when we square root the 36, that will give us six, but don't forget, whenever we square root in an equation, we have to remember that plus or minus, because there's actually two numbers that give you 36 when you multiply them by themselves. Now, I'm not done yet, because I finally broke out of that parenthesis. Now, I'm ready to go ahead and take care of that minus one but I've got a plus six here and a negative six. So what I like to do is go ahead and make my split now. I've got an X minus one equals a positive six, and I've got X minus one equals negative six. And then those are the two equations that I'm gonna to solve to get my answer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add one to both sides 
That'll give me a positive seven for my first answer. Add one to both sides. That will give me a negative five for my second answer. So again, I can go ahead and just box those or circle those, or I can write it as a pretty little brace. But notice that your answer is not simply the plus or minus six, okay? Because you have that extra one to take care of. Once you take care of that one, your answer is not plus or minus seven because you've got this total equation over here that's equal to the negative six, which does not give you negative seven. So you gotta remember the fact that you're adding one to a positive six and adding one to a negative six gives you two completely different answers. So that's why these get a little bit trickier. Last but not least for number nine, okay? I do notice there is some addition and subtraction I can take care of first, and I'm not talking about this three here. Remember, he's protected, leave him alone. However, I've got that minus 25. So I'm gonna go ahead and add him over to the other side. That'll be some easy math since I just had a zero over there. If there had been another number, then just go ahead and do that math. Add the 25 to it. I'm gonna be left with the x plus three in parentheses with the squared on the left. Um, there is nothing extra in front to divide or multiply. So I can go ahead and get rid of that exponent now. So we're gonna go ahead and square root both sides. Remember, by square rooting, that exponent of 2 will completely get knocked out. The x plus 3 just pops right on out, unchanged. And now that gives me a plus or minus 5. So that means I'm going to break it up into x plus 3 equals positive 5. And I've got x plus 3 equals negative 5. Solving those equations, my first answer will give me a two. My second answer gives me a negative eight. So again, for these two types of problems here, now you don't have X being squared directly, instead he's part of a quantity. Do not try to distribute, foil, ah, don't do any of that. Concentrate on just getting that quantity, that set of parentheses that's being squared. Work to get that all by itself on one side, so that way then you can square root and continue on with your solving. So this was using square roots to solve quadratics. Again, most important note is you can only use this if your problems kind of look like this. Or on the other page, they just had an x squared term and a number, but no extra x term just floating around there with nothing around them, okay? So from here, you should be going back onto Google Classroom and go ahead and fill out the Google form, which is the homework. Again, as soon as you submit it, it will come back and tell you whether you're correct or incorrect for the problems. It'll give you the correct answer and any extra notes that I can provide for you to help you figure out what to do for the problem. And uh, we'll take it from there. So let me know if you have any questions, email, text, message the Google Mind app, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.